Welcome to Roblox Snippets. If you'd like to learn how to create trigger parts that make things happen on the screen, keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Hi everybody and welcome to this video about uh, trigger parts. So this is a beginner video. Uh, if you want to learn how to create these parts, then just uh, keep watching. All right, the first thing we're going to do is in our workspace here is to create a part to work with. So up the top, click on your home tab and then come over and you'll find part and we'll create it in the workspace. Over here, you'll see it's appeared in the uh, Explorer window and we'll come down, click on the brick color and pick a brick color that you like and then scroll down further and we're going to click the anchored box to make sure that the part is anchored and stays where we put it. Last thing we'll do is scroll back up a little bit to the size, there it is, and change it to 6 by 0.5 by 6. Okay, and that makes us a little tile uh, in our workspace to work with. All right, now we're going to add a script to this part. So in the Explorer window, click on the part and then the plus sign next to it to add a script. We'll change the name of our script to trigger part. So now we have a part in the workspace with a, a script attached to it. And we want this script to run when a player touches this part. So to do that, we'll get rid of our print hello world. The first thing we need is a variable to represent the part itself. And we do that by saying local and giving it a name. So we're going to call this one trigger equals script dot parent. All right, so that represents our part. Now the next uh, variable that we're going to create here, we start by typing local db. So local means that these these variables are, can only be accessed within this script. All right, that's the the main purpose of it. Uh, to keep it simple. And we're going to create a boolean so local db equals true and this is short for the word debounce now debounce is used uh, to control how a script runs uh, or how often the script runs all right now we come to the part where we deal with the touching of the part so trigger and then we put a dot and start typing the word touched and you'll see that touched comes up here with a little lightning bolt that lightning bolt means that this is an event or something that is happening in the game and the event here is that something is touching this part when we add this to it so that's what we'll do now when something touches the part what we want to do is add a colon and we want to connect a function to this so inside of the brackets here type the word function and then add another set of brackets and inside of these set of brackets now we want to create a parameter or another little variable and we'll call hit and that will represent what is it that is actually hitting the part all right and we can pass that in to the function inside so we end up with something that looks like this okay so we're designing this script to work with characters or other players in particular but other parts can also touch other parts but we need to check first that a part uh, or whatever is touching the trigger over here is actually a character and so what we'll do is we'll uh, test this for a start now we're going to say the, the part we'll put in a comment here the part touching or hitting the trigger part Right, and we'll put in here print hit and we're going to run this and I'll show you exactly what we're talking about here uh, actually just before we do that we'll create our a variable for our trigger as well uh, for our character so just below this we'll say um, uh, get the parent to find the character so local character equals hit dot parent and down here we're going to put print and it will say character 
Right, so we're going to have two prints run here, and the purpose of this is just to show you how our parenting works. So let's uh, click on play. All right, so I'm in the game, and you'll notice as soon as I touch that part, and I only barely touched it, you'll see that it said right foot, and then my character name. Right lower leg, my character name. Now, in here, this, all right, is a part of the character, and hit.parent makes it the character. So any part inside, and if we look over here uh, in the workspace, here's my character, and then if you expand your character and you look down here, you'll see all the parts in here. So head, left foot, etc., hand, all of those are inside of, or children of, this here, which is the character. And that's how we get our character inside of our script. All right, so I'll click stop there and we'll come back to our script. We can get rid of the print statement for our uh, character there and we'll leave the print one up the top. Um, you can comment that out if you like and just leave it there for now uh, until you get the hang of writing these scripts. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to make sure that it's a, a character we want to work with it has another part in it called a humanoid. So what we want to do is check for a humanoid in the character. Right, so local humanoid will equal character, and we're going to find first child, okay, humanoid. And right below this, now we can create a conditional statement. So we're going to allow code to run if it uh, is a player. And the way we do that is to say if humanoid and db. So as long as then, so as long as both of these are true, so we do have a humanoid and db is set to true, then we're going to let this code in here run. Now, this is where we make use of our DB up the top here. And the first thing we're going to do is set this to be false. So DB equals false. And then we're going to run whatever code we want to run inside here. And then at the end of this section of code, we'll add in a task dot wait of, say, one second. All right. And then we will set DB back to true and this will allow this code to run every second when the character runs on it all right so it'll run once wait for a second even if the character is running around and then reset and come back and allow it to run again all right so we'll make a note of that in here as well so set db to false to control the timing of code Okay. All right, so now we're going to make something happen inside of our code here uh, each time. And in the example, I I did a couple of things, uh, but we'll we'll write some code here. So this will be code that runs if it is a character. All right. Now I've set up here player. Uh, it's the same thing um, down here, so we can say player here too if you like. So it's not confusing. And the things that will make happen. So we'll say print in here. Let's say hello. And then put a space. And then we'll character. Character dot name. So that will print. And then another comma. And then we'll say you are a character. Okay. That will be a print statement that will run each time we run the code and now to make something else happen let's change the uh, triggers brick color so trigger and we can change the brick color which will be equal to and we're just going to use a random brick color so we'll say brick color dot and with a capital r type in random and just set a set of brackets and that will pick a random color for us and the other thing we'll do is we'll make the size of our part change. So let's say 
at uh, trigger dot size and we will add on to it so put plus equals and we'll change the size using a vector 3 dot new and we'll change it we'll make it big so we're going to add 10 onto each side and we won't add anything to the height of it and 10 on the other side and that will make our part grow by 10 studs each time we run onto it all right so let's give that a try i'll just clear this here if we click on file and save and let's play all right let's run on and you should see the part got bigger and i've got this down the bottom here so and if i run again and keep running if i scroll out a bit you'll see that each time each second that i move it's printing it's changing the brick color and it's making my part get bigger all right so they're just uh, three very simple uses of this code but you can use it in many many different ways to do many many different things uh, if you found this video useful subscribe now for more information about my online courses go to mrbrendanross.com